friends and welcome back. In today's video we are talking about clothes. I think with clothes we tend to think that the more clothes we have, the more choices we have, and the more choices we have, the more likely that we're going to look fashionable and amazing, but I find that very often the opposite is actually true. Too many clothes is actually overwhelming and it just makes getting dressed in the morning a chore. And so the goal of today's video is to teach you how to purge your clothing down just to the pieces that you absolutely love so that you can avoid that age-old problem of tons of clothes and nothing to wear. Now I have certainly not always had a more minimal closet. This is something that I kind of had had to learn over time and I definitely was inspired to do it when I first had my son because I remember I when I went to get dressed I just wanted to be able to like open my closet, grab something that was going to be comfortable, something that would fit, something that was conducive to my lifestyle, but instead I often found myself standing in front of my closet feeling totally bogged down, feeling like I was sifting through all of these pieces that like didn't match or didn't fit quite right. I remember thinking that I wanted my closet to be just a lot more grab and go. I wanted to be able to open it, see things I loved, grab whatever, and it would like all work together. And it's taken me well over a year to sort of master this, but I found that it comes down to four basic steps. One, define my style. Two, purge my clothes. Three, organize my clothes by type. And four, purge my clothes again. So what I want to do in this video is essentially save you the over a year of time that it took me to do this, walk you through the steps, how to tackle them, and basically help you declutter your closet so that you always have something to wear. So let's do this. Oh, you you were supposed to be coming with me, so come on. Okay, so I know that you think the first step to decluttering your closet is obviously gonna be to purge your clothes, right? Well, I'm gonna stop you right there and say nope, because I think that purging without a plan is just going to lead to you not doing it very well, or you're going to purge and get organized only to end up cluttered and disorganized in a couple of months. And that's why I say before you even get to this step, the first step that you need to do if you wanna declutter your closet is define your style. So what does that mean? Let's head to the whiteboard. All right, here we are at the whiteboard and or my son's art easel. Tomato, tomato, okay guys? Now, when I'm talking about defining our style, I'm not saying you need to have some signature style, okay? This is reality, not sex in the city. But I do want you to start thinking about a couple of things that really define what your style is, and you can think about that with a couple of questions. The first one is, what type of clothing suits your lifestyle? The next one is, what type of clothing do you always feel comfortable in? And then the last one is, what pieces do you wear on repeat all of the time? and why. Now a word of caution, when we're defining our style, we often can get caught up in defining our style for like our fantasy life and not our reality life because we all have a dream style, but it's not always conducive to our life. For example, in my fantasy life, I wear cute floral feminine dresses and leather skirts and like tweed blazers and chunky boots and I just like always look really put together. But in my reality life, I spend most of my days chasing around a sticky-handed toddler and editing videos on my sofa. So while I do have, you know, cute floral feminine dresses in my wardrobe, it's not the bulk of what my wardrobe is because that's just not conducive to my lifestyle. So what you really want to start thinking about is clothing that not only matches your style and your dream style, but also fits your lifestyle. And to help you do this, I find that you can sort of organize your clothing into six main categories. The first one is active. So this would be like uh, working out or going to the gym. The next one is going to be daily. This is going to be like running errands if you're a mom, doing mom stuff, just like the day-to-day -day stuff that you do around the house. The next one is going to be formal. So this would be uh, going out, girls night out, date night, uh, special events. The next one is going to be work. If you go into an office, if you have a corporate job, if you have meetings. The next one is going out. So this is like kind of entertainment style clothing. This would be if you're going out to the movies or you're going out to the bar for the night. And then the last one would be loungewear. So this is stuff that you're just wearing around the house, you're watching movies, you're doing some chores. So once you know these categories, I want you to start to think about which of these categories are your primary categories. How do you spend your days? Do I go to formal events? Yes. Do I go to a formal event every month? No. Sometimes I go months and months where I don't go to a formal event, so it's definitely not a primary category for me. I want to think about the things that I spend the majority of my life doing. So for me, my two primary categories are loungewear and daily life. I don't even really have a third primary category. I guess you could maybe say going out, but I honestly do that maybe two times a month 
a little bit less with COVID, so it's not even really a primary category for me. The reason that I like thinking about your clothing based on categories is because I feel like it can really put your wardrobe into perspective when you realize that maybe you spend 10% or less of your days in going out outfits, you realize it seems sort of silly for more than 10% of your wardrobe to cater to that. Previous to when I did this, I definitely had a going out wardrobe that was way bigger, but it didn't really make sense because it was only 10% of my life, but it was taking up 40% of my wardrobe. Does that make sense? At this point, I do want to mention I do have a printable. I'm going to link it in the description box down below that um, has a tons of like guides and worksheets that's going to walk you through basically everything we're talking about in this video, from defining your style to the steps we're going to do a little bit later as far as organizing and purging. So I will link that down below if it's Sounds like it would be helpful for you to sort of get you motivated and get you jump started in decluttering. All right, guys, now it is time to purge. It is a lot easier to purge your clothes when you have a better idea of what your style is and what clothing is more conducive to your lifestyle. It's going to make it a lot easier to weed through your clothing and for you to it's like decide do you really need 10 sequin blouses when you haven't been to a concert in five years. But purging is also the hardest part. But do not fear. I've gone through this process. I have conquered it and I feel like I've been able to conquer it in a way that's going to make it a lot easier for you. So I'm going to sort of walk you through it to make the process of purging a little bit easier. We're going to go through your wardrobe piece by piece and you're going to ask yourself a couple of questions about each item to decide whether or not you're going to keep it. Now to make this easier I've actually created a little flow chart and this is available in the printable that I was telling you about a minute ago but if you want to download just the flow chart you can get it totally for free and again I will link that in the description box down below so you can download it and use it as you go. It's going to walk you through some simple steps to help you determine if something is worth keeping or not. The flow chart is really going to help you sort of weed through your clothing and decide what to keep and what to toss and what to donate but I want to discuss a couple of them in a little bit deeper, dive a little bit deeper and sort of talk about what some of the hang-ups might be when it comes to deciding if we're going to keep our clothes or not. So we should probably head back to the whiteboard for this. Okay, the first question I always start with when it's time to purge clothes is, have I worn this item in the last year? And the reason that I always start here is because I feel like the majority of our closets end up really cluttered because we keep what I call the just in case pieces. These are the pieces that we are keeping just in case that we just might wear them or we just might have a reason that we need this. And then a year quickly goes by and we realize that we haven't worn it and it's still sitting in the closet totally untouched. Now, if the answer is no to the have you worn it in the last year, question then you can refer to the flow chart but I want to dive a little bit deeper into the just in case pieces because in my opinion the just in case pieces are like 90% of the problem of cluttered closets. So that's why when I sit down to purge my clothes I always ask myself have I worn this item in the last year because my general rule of thumb is if I haven't worn it in a year Kelly you're probably not going to wear it. But I get it that it's not always as simple as that because we often end up with things in our wardrobe that we're hanging on to for specific reasons. Maybe it's sentimental, maybe it was really expensive, or we keep convincing ourselves that we just might need it for some upcoming event. Let me give you an example. I carried around this blush colored blazer for about five years and I don't think I wore it once in those five years because I was just convinced that I needed a blazer in my wardrobe in case you know I ever had like a corporate event to go to or like a business meeting and then one day it hit me Callie you literally are never gonna have to go to a corporate event or a meeting like the chance of me having to go to a corporate event in which I need to wear a blazer is so slim that the idea of wasting an entire hanger in my closet just seemed silly. But what I'm trying to say is I totally get it. I understand how these just in case pieces build up in our closet. And that's why I want to talk about how to tackle these just in case pieces. Okay, when you are faced with the dreaded just in case piece, I have three questions I want you to ask yourself that's going to help you determine if you should keep it or not. And the first one is, does it fit and do you like the way that it looks on you? Because if the answer to this is no, let it go, girl. There's no point keeping something that's not comfortable, that doesn't fit, you don't like the way that it looks. It's just taking up space in your closet that could be used for pieces that you really love. The next question is, if you haven't worn it in a year, do you anticipate that you're going to wear it within the next year? Because if you didn't wear it for a full year and you can't think of an actual thing that you probably will wear it to in the next year, you're probably never going to wear this. And you have to think about if you're saving something for a special event, we very often will go out and buy new outfits for special events anyways. Say you're holding on to a nice dress and you're like, maybe I could wear this to a wedding. If you had a wedding on your calendar right now, 
is this the dress that you would wear or do you think you would probably pick something else and my final question that always helps me decide if i'm going to keep something or not is if i saw this hanging in a store right now would i want to buy it our style changes over time our wants and needs for clothing change over time and so when i'm ever really like on the fence about keeping something i ask myself would i buy this if i saw it hanging in a store right now and if the answer is no then I can probably let it go. Ultimately, the biggest question I want you to ask yourself when you're deciding to keep something or not is if I open my closet and I saw it hanging in there right now, would I wanna put it on? Whew, okay, I know that was a lot of information and honestly, purging is the hardest step, so you've made it through the hardest part and now it is time to move on to the next step, which is organizing. Once all your clothing is purged, it's time to put it back into your closet or dresser or wherever it is that you store your clothes. But as you're putting your clothes back, I want you to start to move away from the idea of just organizing your clothes by type and instead start thinking about organizing your clothes by use. Here's a really good example of what I mean. I used to store my leggings and my pajamas in the same drawer because in my mind, they're both loungewear, right? So it makes sense that they would go together, except it doesn't really work because they both provide very different uses for me. Pajamas I wear at night, I sleep in them. I don't run errands in them. Leggings, on the other hand, I almost never sleep in, but they are essentially pants. So while they're both essentially loungewear, they don't serve the same purpose for me. So storing them together doesn't really make sense because then every single morning when I go to get dressed and I'm looking for leggings, I'm sifting through pajamas, or at the end of the day after I take my shower and I just want to put on some pajamas, I'm sifting through leggings looking for pajamas. So even though they technically fit into the same category, they both provide very different uses. And you want to start to think about separating your clothes and organizing them by use. The main reason that organizing our closet by use is because when we go to our closet, we have a very specific reason that we're there. We're looking for something to run errands in. We're looking for a dress to take to date night. We're looking for our comfortable pants because we're about to watch a movie. So that's why organizing all of our clothes by use makes the most sense for the way that we use our closets. Another reason that organizing by use is really, really nice is because it helps us decide if we have too much or not enough of something. Like I said, going back to those primary categories, if I know that formal isn't one of my primary categories, but when I'm looking at my dresses, I realize that 50% of them are nice, fancy dresses, I might realize it's probably time to purge. I have too many formal dresses and that's not really suitable to my lifestyle. So as you are putting your clothes back into your closet, I really want you to think about the purpose of each clothing, piece and the way that you use it because it's just going to make your closet a lot more streamlined. It's going to make it a lot easier when you go to get dressed every morning. A final note that I want to throw in on this topic that I have started doing in the last probably year and a half is having what I consider the second wardrobe. Now second wardrobe sounds very frivolous. It sounds like I have so many clothes, I have so much that I just have a whole second wardrobe, but it's actually, that's not the point. The goal of second wardrobe is to have a place that you can store any clothes that you probably won't be wearing in the next six months. So this way you have a place to store clothes you need, but it's not bogging down your everyday clothes. Remember the goal of having a more minimal streamlined closet is that when you open it, you literally can just grab and go. So let me give you an example of what I mean. I live in Connecticut and we have seasons here, it gets cold. Right now we're going into winter and so I don't need my jean shorts. I'm probably not gonna need jean shorts until probably May. So the thought of having a bunch of jean shorts in with my pants doesn't make any sense because I'm literally not going to be wearing them for the next six months. It's just going to clutter up my pants drawer. It's going to make it harder to find the pants that I'm looking for every morning. And so that's where second wardrobe comes in. Now second wardrobe doesn't need to be anything fancy. Like I said, it can be a vacuum seal bag. It can be a couple like large Tupperwares that you keep in the basement. All that really matters is that you have a dedicated space where you have your clothing Again, organized by use. And now for my fourth and final step, and that is to purge again. I find that just consistent purging is the best way to keep your closet minimal, as opposed to letting it all build up and doing it once a month or every time you move. And you'll sort of find that as you have a more minimal closet, it will become a lot easier to purge. You really won't want pieces sitting around bogging down your closet. I find that pretty much every time I'm doing laundry, as I'm putting items back into my closet. I'm like, do I even want this taking up space in my closet? It's just something that I'm always thinking about. And one of my favorite tricks, once you get your closet minimal, is to adopt the one in, one out rule. That means every time you buy something new and you bring it into your closet, something else has got to go. And it can be a little bit hard at first, but you actually will find it really, really helps you keep the closet minimal, but it also helps you with purchasing. You tend to be a lot less likely to buy something unless it's something you absolutely love. It's super comfortable. It fits you so well because you know you're going to have to get rid of something else. Okay. All right. Wow. That was, I feel like we just covered a lot of ground in a short period of time. 
How are you feeling? Are you feeling okay? A little overwhelmed? Mostly motivated, I hope. Again, I wanna remind you that I have that printable that's in the description box down below that literally like outlines everything we've talked about in this video, including some worksheets and some guides to make it a little bit easier. But I hope that at the end of this video, you're feeling pretty motivated, you're feeling more empowered and ready to get rid of some clothes that maybe aren't serving you. A more minimal closet is just going to serve you so much better. I can't tell you how much easier it's made my life. There's less laundry. I spend less time getting dressed in the morning. I also have saved a ton of money because once you get really good at streamlining your closet, you tend to buy a lot less like little frivolous pieces. You get a lot smarter about filling your closet with things that you really need and want. But really, I think that you see that at the end of the day, it's really more of like a thought process of how you think about your clothes and how you think about storing your clothes and keeping your clothes in your closet. But that does it for this video. Thank you so, so much for stopping by and watching. I hope you are having a fantastic day and I will see you all in my next video.